You're listening to Islamic Radio Station Radio Noor 8:10 a.m. Alhamdulillah, welcome to the English half of the Radio Noor show. Now, would you believe we had planned to have a show on procrastination a long time ago, but we're just now getting around to it. No, uh, seriously though, Allah says, "By time, verily, man is in loss." So as the time passes, man is losing out, except those who believe and do righteous good deeds. And Allah also says, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى And that there is not for man except that for which he strives, makes effort. And the Prophet Muhammad spoke on the issue of using time well when he said, Take advantage of five matters before five other matters your youth before you become old, your health before you fall sick, your wealth before you become poor, your free time before you become preoccupied, and your life before your death. And we don't know when these changes will take place. We don't know <clears throat> if we're healthy, when that health might be lost and would have lost our chance, or when our wealth might be taken from us, or when uh, something might happen in our lives that removes our free time. Or we don't know when our life will be taken altogether. So we should take our chances when they come. And interestingly, the condition of the paradise is the opposite. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, A caller will cry out uh, to the people of the paradise, You will be healthy and will never fall sick. You will live and will never die. You will remain young and will never grow old. You will feel ease and will never be miserable. Allah says an interpretation of the meaning of the Quran and it will be cried out to them. This is the paradise which you have inherited for what you used to do. So Alhamdulillah, take our chances now and then we have all the time in the hereafter for enjoyment. Alhamdulillah. Now regarding battling procrastination and developing productivity, the Muslim scholars and the experts in psychology and human behavior will all bring many, many advices, but we'll start with an obvious place for the Muslims, which is attachment to Al-Quran by reciting it, studying it, and applying it. Because we have a warning when Allah says, And the Messenger will say, O oh my Lord, verily my people deserted this Quran. They neither listened to it, acted on its laws, etc. So uh, this is a warning for us that we have to remain on Al-Quran and attach to it daily. Um, and we see there are so many ways that this attaches to this issue of procrastination and productivity. Firstly, reciting Al-Quran is productive itself. Because uh, every letter earns 10 hasanat. If we write, recite this for the sake of Allah, we are getting a lot of benefits uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the malaika will actually come to listen to the one reciting this is a beautiful uh, thing productive thing that we can do in our lives as well reading and studying Al-Quran increases fear of Allah and hope in Allah which are both strong motivators the strongest motivators really in the life of a believer also reading Al-Quran is purifying and healing and gives us guidance all of those things enable us to do good and to be productive and reading Al-Qur'an is a means of protection from ash-shaytan who would try to make us lazy and divert us and uh, send us to the uh, wasteful kinds of actions. There are also specific dua that cover issues of productivity. Uh, one is اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الحم والحزن وعجل والكسل وبخل وجبن وضلدين وغلبة الرجال O Allah, I take refuge in you from anxiety and sorrow, weakness and laziness, miserliness and cowardice, the burden of debts and from being overpowered by men. Now, this dua, we can say if we are in debt, to relieve the debt, but we'll see the whole thing is covering issues that um, cause lack of productivity. So laziness, obviously, can affect productivity but also anxiety and sorrow, 
these things can sap up people's time and pull them back from really being bright and strong in doing good deeds. Weakness and laziness, obviously, miserliness and cowardice, even fear and hoarding, these things are all preventative of action. And being in debt, of course, people may have to work to pay a debt rather than to do what they really want to do. It's like a jail or a weight on one's life. So this dua we can make on a daily basis and being overpowered by men as well so that we can be free to do good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Prophet sallam, he was quick in doing good deeds when he had conceived them and when he had the opportunity. For example, he said, give charity without delay, for it stands in the way of calamity. And so we don't know when the opportunity will come again. When the opportunity to do good or productive or get what we need done comes, we should do it right away. Inshallah, doubt in our capabilities can also happen. Sometimes we calculate things with our very tiny minds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is He not able to do anything He wills with us? And if we take one step, we don't know what new horizons will show up as soon as we take that step. So inshallah, we should not doubt our capabilities. We know ourselves, be realistic, but also don't uh, hamper ourselves by underestimation and by calculating things without remembrance of Allah's great capability. And Allah is able to do all things. Interestingly, we also sometimes fear success or fear failure. Fear of failure seems a little more obvious. And if we have this issue, then remember that if you don't try, you already failed. So this is actually something to be more worried about. And if you fear success, then seek Allah's love, not the love of humans. Because the fear of success may come from how people will treat you or the reaction you'll get and the change in your life. But if you just seek Allah's love in your actions, inshallah, this fear will go away. We should also uh, be humble, work on our humility, remember what we came from and how dependent we are on Allah and how weak we are in our sins to remain humble because if we become arrogant every time we do a good deed, this will prevent us from further good deeds and ruin our productivity. Also, the du'a. When we make du'a, be active in trying to achieve what you asked Allah for. When we make du'a to Allah, Allah has given us a means to seek that. We have to employ that and then leave that answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah says there is not for man except that for which he strives. So we have a role to play. And if we make du'a, oh Allah make it easy, give me this, give me that but we don't make an effort to achieve that, then it will be our fault that we missed it. And Allah is able to give it to us anyway, but Alhamdulillah, this is a role that we have as Muslims, that when we make the dua, we have to participate in seeking the answer. Now, a lot of these advices just apply to ourselves and working on ourselves, but there's another one that adds uh, an element that could be quite difficult, but we have to be serious about the time we spend with other people and who we actually spend our time with and how we spend our time with those people because we want to um, get closest with people of knowledge and people with good character and people who are positive and encouraging and also those who give good honest advice and inshallah this will help us to achieve our goals if we are around people who are useful for us and who we can do good with and work together with in khair and in um, good accomplishments that benefit the humanity inshallah and another obvious one is to remove or limit distractions. Um, sometimes now we're playing uh, silly games on iPhones. They can be very distracting. Um, watching shows that are actually not of any benefit and useless talk. We have to have balance. We can't be overly hard on ourselves, but we have to work toward using our time the best way. Take one step at a time and uh, look at things that actually uh, are muddling your mind or muddling your time and remove them and inshallah we have to all apply this i apply to this to myself first inshallah and learn the religion because how do we do good except by knowledge of what is good and if we don't know the religion of allah SWT, if we haven't studied it and attached ourselves to the scholars then we don't know what 
to avoid and what to do in the details and Allah loves best the deeds done most perfectly. So inshallah study of the deen itself is productive. But also this will enable us to apply the religion because we can't apply it without first knowing it. And I'll have to tell you learning useful worldly knowledge and implementing it as well is highly productive because you can be active in worldly matters for the sake of Allah by changing the intention for instance and it's good for the face of Islam to be productive in general and it's good for us to be fulfilled and happy in order to get things done so if we learn useful worldly knowledge this will give us opportunities to implement that knowledge as well and you know in terms of changing our intention even if we we fulfill our, our religious obligations and now we go to work we can excel in work to protect the face of Islam to give an example of an upstanding Muslim to others to uh, show that Islam is contributive to the community to feed the, our families for the sake of Allah to earn money to support the cause of Allah etc so all of these works in the the worldly life can actually be applied to the hereafter and also our personal satisfaction and I have to tell us as well to and myself to be balanced and consistent one day of outburst is not as good as every day good deeds consistent and developing habits of productivity are much greater than sudden outbursts and Allah loves best the deeds done most consistently and the greatest accomplishments are done over long consistent step-by-step -step efforts and we might not even know where we're headed but Allah will accomplish with us great things if we just take the next step every day and then we don't know where we will find us ourselves in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years as a person as a family as a community and as an ummah so participate inshallah and may Allah make all of us men and women balanced and productive for ourselves our families our community and the whole ummah ameen because Allah says fastabiqul khayrat Aynama takunu yati bikumu Allahu jami'a in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. So compete with one another in good works. This is the good competition. Wherever you may be, Allah will bring you all together. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, Allah will bring us all together. Truly, Allah is able to do all things. Alhamdulillah. This brings us back to where we began, a comprehensive surah about which Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said it would be sufficient for us if this is all we had from the Quran. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. By time, indeed, mankind is in loss, except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience.